Filmmakers tasked with adapting comic book icons for the big screen have their work cut out for them. After all, redesigning a universe filled with flashy supersuits and living planets can be a bit of a challenge. Plus, screwing up the balance of faithful and creative means inspiring the fiery wrath of comic book fanboys. And nobody wants that. Luckily, the Afro-futuristic nation of Wakanda and its denizens have been given one badass makeover for the big screen. And even though we're super into the aesthetic that director Ryan Coogler's bringing to the table, Let's take a look at what the cast of Black Panther should really look like. T'Challa Black Panther The man behind the Black Panther mask, T'Challa, has been the king of Wakanda since his father's death, drawing the signing of the Sokovia Accords in Captain America Civil War. Like his Avengers ally Tony Stark, T'Challa isn't afraid to switch up his gear every once in a while. Since going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bucky Barnes, also known as Winter Soldier, in his MCU debut, T'Challa snagged a spiffy new costume, a lighter, energy-absorbent vibranium suit. This one boasts a more tribal aesthetic reminiscent of illustrator Andy Park's early concept design of the butt-kicking king's panther mantle. Black Panther's new suit remains relatively faithful to recent comic runs, and T'Challa himself looks pretty close to his comic book counterpart too. Where Chadwick Boseman's interpretation of the character isn't afraid to rock the scruff, however, his comic book equivalent is all about keeping that chiseled jaw fur free. Still, Boseman's T'Challa is a near-perfect real-life interpretation of the King Cat in Black. Ulysses Claw while Black Panther's titular hero is more or less identical to his comic book double, its main antagonist, Ulysses Claw, has undergone quite an overhaul. Portrayed by master of motion capture Andy Serkis, Claw has swapped out his comics counterpart, Bulky Sonic Blaster, for a souped-up, retractable prosthetic. But by far the biggest difference between the charismatic arms dealer and his sinister supervillain namesake is the fact that Serkis's Claw is obviously not a being made entirely of living sound. Technically, Marvel Comics' Claw was also once a bearded human jerk, but his eventual redesign as a red and purple baddie and frequent nemesis of the Fantastic Four is the far more memorable incarnation of the one-armed heel. Shuri Sister of T'Challa and Smarty Pants Vibranium Tinkerer, Princess Shuri is a force to be reckoned with. Not only is she the greatest scientific genius this side of Stark Tower, but in the comics, she's taken up the Panther Mantle on a number of occasions in her brother's absence. In other words, like T'Challa, she's consumed the heart-shaped herb and reaped the same superhuman powers. Shuri, portrayed by Letitia Wright in MCU's Black Panther, has undergone a dramatic redesign. Chief among the differences is her outfit, a sleeveless tunic and a full mantle with neck coverage along with what appears to be a chin guard. While comic book Shuri doesn't wear much makeup save for the occasional strip of paint over her chin, the MCU's Wakandan princess adorns herself with a series of white dots across her forehead, brow, cheeks, and chin. She also wears her hair in a braided updo, while her comic book counterpart typically wears her hair short under an ornate headdress of a Black Panther mask. Killmonger in the comics, the exiled and shamed warrior Najadika adopts the pseudonym Killmonger, blaming both T'Challa's bloodline and Claw for his parents' demise. In an intriguing twist, Michael B. Jordan's interpretation of the character, a former American black ops soldier named Eric Stevens, teams up with the South African supervillain Claw, instead of, you know, beating him to a bloody pulp the first chance he gets. The MCU sees Killmonger, who earned his nickname on the battlefield, transformed from a Herculean behemoth to a buff badass with a sense of style. The MCU's Eric Stevens may have lost his source material straight up a murdery aura, but he more than makes up for it with hip sensibilities, combat know-how, and his very own gold Jaguar suit. Nakia if Lupita Nyong'o has proven anything since her award-winning breakout role in 2013's 12 Years a Slave is that she can do no wrong, so casting her among a Black Panther's pantheon of brilliant actors must have seemed like a no-brainer. Nyong'o portrays Nakia, a secret agent summoned back to Wakanda at the behest of T'Challa. In the Black Panther comics, Nakia teams up with Killmonger and eventually adopts the villain persona Malice after her obsession with the titular Wakandan king lands her in hot water. While her comics counterpart is known for her bead-adorned hair and jewelry, Nyong'o's take on the character wears her hair in tight curls and dons a variety of get-ups, including full Dora Milaje armor. M'Baku 
Thankfully, the Black Panther comic's problematically named Man-Ape will be sticking with his birth name, M'Baku, for his film debut. Producer Nate Moore, however, admits that the gorilla gods are important to M'Baku's tribe, the Jabari. Thus, while he's ditching the name, the Wakandan throne seeker and potential and likely ally to T'Challa will retain a touch of white fur along his arms and legs. His revamped wardrobe is a nod to his source material's gruesome costume, a white gorilla hide that he donned after killing a mythical ape, skinning it, devouring its flesh, and bathing in its blood. Yikes. Ramonda my son, it is your time. Matriarch of Wakanda, wife of the late T'Chaka, and a mother of T'Challa and Shuri, Ramonda has suffered greatly at the hands of her husband and son's political rivals. Yet, despite years of family tragedy, she's proven herself to be a vital asset to the Wakandan High Council. In the Black Panther comics, Ramonda has been depicted with both black and white hair. The MCU's film, on the other hand, sees Angela Bassett's take on the character at her most regal, rocking ivory dreadlocks and a wardrobe fit for the Queen Mother of Wakanda. Wakanda. Zuri In the Black Panther comics, Zuri was a personal attendant to T'Chaka before the Elder Ruler's death. He would go on to serve the same role for his son, the young King T'Challa. That is, until the warrior's untimely demise at the hands of Morlan, an energy vampire, in a sequence of events that's way too complicated to talk about here. Suffice to say, Zuri plays a slightly different role in the MCU. A spiritual Obi-Wan type, the Wakandan shaman-like figure is something of an advisor to T'Challa and his kin. Appearance-wise, these two interpretations look like entirely different characters. While the Marvel Comics iteration of Zuri is a hulking behemoth complete with bursting abs and a neck thick of the most men's waists, Forrester Whitaker isn't. That's not to say the acting veteran doesn't look rad in his own right, trading his comic doppelganger's black mane for a bold dome and adding a splash of color to his drab robes. Zuri's big screen interpretation calls to mind a wise elder figure. Everett Ross Let's face it, Martin Freeman doesn't exactly stand out in a crowd, and neither does Black Panther Comics' Everett K. Ross. He's without question the least interesting and least super-powered guy in the mix. But personality-wise, the cold, no-nonsense CIA operative we met in Captain America Civil War is a total 180 from the Chandler Bing-inspired diplomat tasked with escorting T'Challa onto American soil in the comics. In the Black Panther film, Ross finds himself involved in a conflict between Ulysses Claw and T'Challa, causing him to team up with the Wakandan king and become one of his most trusted allies. While these two versions of Ross are polar opposites in terms of attitude, personality, behavior, and just about everything else, the suits at MCU did a bang-up job nailing his clean-cut style. Or at least they did in Civil War. Sure, they may both be average-looking middle-aged white dudes, but the perpetually suited, too sarcastic for his own good diplomat who once sold his soul for a pair of pants wouldn't be caught dead in a t-shirt and casual jacket. Okay, that's a stretch, we know. But there's really not much to say about this guy. Could he be any more nondescript? Ayo. Like Everett Ross, we briefly met Ayo in Civil War during a confrontation between T'Challa's feisty head of security and Natasha Romanoff, aka Black Widow. While we learned little to nothing about Ayo's character from a short scene, her single line of dialogue, Move, or you will be moved shined a light on what we could come to expect from the Dora Milaje agent. Keeping Black Panther safe is a top priority. Ayo's on-screen presence seems more or less in line with her comic book counterpart. They've both vowed to protect their king and loved ones on many an excursion across Wakanda and beyond. That being said, comic book Ayo has a bit more pizzazz than her film doppelganger, who keeps things simple with a shaved head and traditional Dora Milaje armor. In the comics, Ayo rocks a sick sci-fi shaved head ponytail combo along with glyph-like ink down her forehead head and across her cheeks. Okoye like Ayo, Okoye is a member of T'Challa's personal bodyguard unit, the Dora Milaje. And while a number of the fearsome sisterhood soldiers wear their ink proudly in the comics, MCU's Okoye's shaved head and unique angular tattoos has her standing out from the squad. Denai Guerrero's look is as close as you can get to the comics portrayal of the royal band of butt kickers, depending on the run that is. Black Panther comic writer Tanahasi Coates' contemporary take on the troupe sees them rocking their infamous facial tats and hip haircuts. But Christopher Priest was the brains behind their comic book debut, and his interpretation of the bodyguards was more in line with your typical femme fatales, impractical tight dresses and all. Wakabe 
Daniel Kaluuya's Wakabi shares his comic book counterpart's primary responsibilities as chief of Wakandan border tribe security. In the Black Panther comics, Wakabi would prove to be an invaluable ally to T'Challa, even becoming his second in command before dying alongside Zori at the hands of Morlan. Again, that dude whose arc we're not even getting into. Like Zori, Wakabi's MCU interpretation differs from his source material's incarnation so dramatically that the uninformed might mistake him for a brand new character. While the Black Panther comics depict Wakabi with a bundle of wild dreadlocks and little clothing so as to not restrict him while he's bashing skulls, Kaluuya's character of the same name sticks to a relatively reserved look, appearing more like an angry puppy than the grizzled, bionic armed warrior we've come to love and mourn. Thanks for watching! Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too!